Hi, everyone. Welcome to the next short attention span webinar. Kelly, what do you do for work? Boy, that's a big question to someone like you. You have a lot of jobs. Don't you? <laughs> and, you know, Bill, I've always said that I actually – I never, ever, ever ask this question of somebody when I meet them for the first time, like at a party or, you know, out to dinner or something like that, because I find it to be a very, um, I feel like there's so much more that's interesting about people other than what they do, and it's just not a very creative way to ask the question. However, for the purposes of what this discussion is, this is a very, very important question, and our answer to it um, really, um, really can make a huge difference in the impact we have on people. When, when my oldest daughter was five years old, they asked her in kindergarten, they said, what do, your, what do your parents do? And she said, well, Daddy works in the basement, and Mommy catches snowflakes on her tongue. <laughs> <laughs> That's she fantastic. She's a special child. Yeah, isn't that cute? So, you know, uh, here's the thing. Describing what you do, it really is very difficult for me to describe what I do. And because I've got the weirdest job of anybody I know. I, you know, people who are doctors, that's easy, lawyer, banker. You know, office manager or whatever they 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 get all that therapist they get all that stuff. With me, it's kind of hard. I I can't quite well. You know what? I mean, I've got a lot of content online. I'm a sales trainer, but I'm also a public speaker. Yeah, but I'm a writer as well, and it's very fragmented. Not everyone has that problem. If you're a salesperson, okay, that's great. But Kelly, what's the downside of saying I'm a print salesperson or I'm a packaging salesperson? Well, it kind of pigeonholes you. You know, number one, the, you, the sales kind of tends to have that connotation of, oh, boy, this person's going to try to sell me something. But there's also that when you when you put yourself in the box of print, that automatically kind of drives that conversation to, oh, you sell printing? Well, what's your price on a 1,000 postcards? No, 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 that's not the kind of conversation that we want to have. And we talk about this all the time, that we really need to focus that discussion around literally what we do. Um, and so you find yourself saying things like, I help companies, dot, dot, dot. I right. serve this industry by dot, dot, dot. Way, way better, more descriptive, um, more interesting answer that is going to get you a lot of different places than, oh, you sell printing? Go down and talk to my procurement guy. Yeah, but it, but it doesn't need to be cute, right? I mean, you don't need to come no, up with something. No, not at all. You know, if you're, if you're not a rocket scientist, then don't tell people you're a rocket scientist. Keep it simple right. for sure. But mm -hmm. there's there's two aspects to looking at this. One is your external brand. So if someone asks, what do you do? And, or if you're just describing what it is you do, especially, you know, uh, when you're saying, when you're calling on voicemail, you're getting someone on the phone, my name is Bill Farquharson, my company's Aspire 4, and the next thing that comes out of your mouth is your brand. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what we do. This is who I am. It's your external brand. And I mentioned in a, in a previous webinar on books, a, a, a book called Brand Warfare. It's a very interesting concept, a very interesting book. Um, I can't, Michael, gosh, I can't remember the name of the, oh, anyway, it'll come to Alessandro? Me. Yeah, I think that's it, yeah. Yeah, it's on my bookshelf right now. I just looked up at it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, very cool book. There's all, brand Warfare is one of them. Um, and that's a that's a terrific book on branding. Uh, there's another one on on really fun branding type of marketing tools, uh, you know, crazy marketing stuff. But but that that uh, that what what do you do for work? Answer is the way you define yourself to customers. And remember, if you use the word print, people have in in their head, like Kelly said, they've got in their head what that means. Okay, so you've heard us say in the past, if someone says to you. Yeah, we already we have a printer already. They might mean that they're running down to Staples to get copies made. Well, that's not what you're talking about here. So you've got to define who you are externally. The other thing is internal, Kelly. Now, what do we mean by that? We talk about an internal brand. Answering the question, what do you do? Well, that really again is more how you view yourself and what your self perception is. And again, it's getting very clear about you know what you want to do, how you view yourself. And having that confidence and that belief that what you do is of value to people instead of a nuisance or a bother or, oh, nobody ever returns my calls and I'm just a schlepper and all I do all day long is hammer the phones, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, and it's, you know, and just to expand on that, I, I think it also helps you to <laughs> position your sales call. So that you're, you're, you're clear. oftentimes you'll find if you've, if you've ended up in the price objection 
constantly. Part of the problem is you're positioning yourself improperly. So if you come as a problem solver, your chances of ending up at the price objection are slim because you're creating something. You're understanding the story behind a printed piece and you're coming up with the best solution. If you call yourself a print salesperson, then the response you're going to get is great. Here, give me a price on this. Oh, that's right. You know? So you've got some options. Sure, you want to call yourself a sales rep, an account rep, that's fine. If you want to say I sell printing, keep it minimum. I, I tend to look at the, the impact of the work. So the impact of the work that I do at Aspire 4 is to say I drive sales momentum. And I, I, I challenged Kelly to come up with, and I gave her another 10 minutes to do this, but <laughs> <laughs> but you did well. Explain that to me. Yeah, I, well, again, I got to thinking about the descriptors or, well, I'm a sales coach or I blog for printing impressions or sometimes customers call me and ask me to help them find salespeople. I realized it is, as you said, there's a lot of hats we wear and we do a lot of different things, but the ultimate end result is I have conversations with a person or an organization, help them figure it out what it is that they want, and then help them get it. So it could be we need sales. Okay, well, you need salespeople. Here's how we go about doing that. Or I've got a couple guys that I think are really struggling. Okay, let's figure out what they're, how they're struggling, why they're struggling, and let's see what we can do to fix that problem. So, again, it's more, it's more mission-oriented, I think. It's more all, it says something about our purpose. And I like to use words, and maybe this is a gender thing, I don't know, but I like to use words like help, serve, you know, things like that. I help organizations. I serve, you know, if, if I were a print salesperson today and I were working in a particular vertical market, you know, I might say, I serve the healthcare markets and help them improve their, their, their marketing communications or something of that nature or, or okay. focus on the results or something like that. But there's a lot of different ways to go about doing that. And then you and I both like these words. We help our customers to find their customers. Right. You know, if, you, you, if you've been listening to these webinars for a while, you've heard us say that in the past. I think that's a great position statement. We help our customers to find their customers. Um, I've also seen some business cards that say business growth strategist. You know, I love that. Uh, back when yep. digital printing was first coming out, there were some friends of mine that were running around talking about it, and they were digital evangelists. You know, I love that. Word. I love the word evangelist as a descriptor. Again, I, you know, it really, it displays passion. You know, and we shouldn't yeah. be ashamed. We shouldn't be ashamed of loving what we do and feeling very enthusiastic about it. We have to be. Well, and then finally, you know, I, I think the, the, the takeaway here is to sit down and figure out, okay, so what do you do? And you might want to think about finishing that sentence. I work with my clients to, or my clients benefit from, but come up with something for the purpose of explaining it to a customer on a voicemail. On a, on a conversation and making certain that this is something that you've got positioned between your ears so that it makes sense to you as well. So, all right, Kelly, you've helped me to, um, to uh, <laughs> identify my goals and you're going to help me to achieve my goals and I'm going to help to drive your sales momentum. Uh, it's a deal. Let's do it. All right. Good enough. And we'll talk to everybody on the next short attention span webinar. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Bill.